Today we're going to talk about exposure delay on the Nikon camera systems and why you might want to use exposure delay instead of the self-timer to improve your landscape photography. So regular watchers of my channel have heard me mention my self-timer settings in my earlier videos, and these days you tend to hear me mention my exposure delay settings more often than self-timer. And the reason I use a self-timer or an exposure delay is so that when I'm on a tripod with those longer shutter speeds, I'm trying to reduce camera shake, either from if I'm on a DSLR, the mirror sort of slapping, or if I'm on mirrorless, just my touching the shutter button, making sure the camera has time to settle. So I used either a self-timer or an exposure delay to help minimize any kind of shake like that on longer exposure images where the shutter was open for longer. Now, the other way to do this would be to use a remote shutter release. And while those are great and there are certain situations where you need more precise timing of when the shutter is going to go off, for example, if you're photographing seascapes or something like that, where you're trying to time a splash of water, a remote shutter release can be a very important and a key piece of gear. But for a lot of the photography I do, I'm not near seascapes. I'm more photographing waterfalls or just woodland scenes where I'm running a longer exposure to get the right amount of light in. So because of that, I don't like to carry that extra piece of gear and have to deal with attaching it to the camera and everything like that. It's just more equipment to fuss with and I'd rather not do it if I can help it. So that's why I use either a self-timer or exposure delay. So using that exposure delay or self-timer helps keep the camera stable, which ultimately leads to sharper landscape images. So what we're going to look at today is some of the advantages of exposure delay and why I've moved from using a self-timer to minimize that camera shake to using exposure delay in my landscape photography. So I used to use the self-timer when I was trying to allow pressing the shutter hands off the camera for a certain amount of time before the image was taken to let things settle down to keep my images sharp. And you could set that delay anything from 2 seconds to 10 seconds. I tended to go between 2 and 5 depending on what I was doing, and that's what I did. Now the thing with self-timer is it's actually just delaying everything that 2 to 5 to 10 seconds from the time you press the shutter. So you press the shutter, it waits, and then it does everything you normally would have done when you pressed the shutter the first time. So things like getting the exposure set, focus, and if the apertures, you know, if you're stopping down the aperture, it would adjust those aperture rings from 5.6 to, you know, f11, f16, you know, a little more mechanical movement in the camera. Now on a DSLR, which I really don't shoot with much these days, but still there's enough people doing it you should be aware, is it's also delaying that mirror flips up in the two to five seconds, which can cause some vibration. So even though it's delaying everything, there's still some vibration that could happen. Okay, so on the Nikon mirrorless to set self timer, you just come in, press the I button over there. This brings you up, you go over to release mode, press OK into there, and you can scroll over to your self-timer settings. If you need to change them, just highlight it, arrow down, set that to 5 seconds. We are also going to change that number of shots back down to 1, say OK, and now we're on 5 seconds, 1 shot. Come back out here, get my focus point, watch my histogram, take my image, and that's the self-timer. Okay, so what I've done is I've popped up my DSLR here to Nikon D750, just for demonstration purposes. I don't use this camera a lot, but here's how you set self-timer mode on a Nikon D-series camera, typically. First, you change the ring up here over to the timer icon right there. You can go into your menu and to the custom settings menu, and we go up to timers, and I can go down to self-timer, C3, and I can set my self-timer delay. Here I've got it set to two seconds, similar to my mirrorless camera. We come back out of there, get my focus point, focus, take the image, and now listen to the mirror. I've pressed the button. So self-timer is delaying everything that happens when you press the shutter, so I still get some of that mirror shake. 
And I used to use self-timer up until I discovered exposure delay, which seemed to be a much better fit for me. Exposure delay, what it does is it takes care of all those things up front. So when you, if you send exposure delay of say two seconds, you press the shutter, and your exposure, your focus is all taken care of up front. If your aperture, you're stopping down like an f11, f16, your aperture rings will move, and then the delay happens until the shutter is actually open to capture the image. So on mirrorless, that's just sort of handy, nice to have, but on a DSLR, it makes an even bigger difference because the mirror is also flipping up when you first click the shutter, then it waits the two to five seconds, and then opens the shutter to take the image. That allows all that mirror slap vibration to, to slow down and, and dissipate. And so while there may not seem to be a lot of difference between self-timer and exposure delay, on DSLR, I would certainly advocate towards moving towards using exposure delay because of that mirror factor. Allowing that mirror to come up, the vibration to settle, and then the image to be taken can make a big difference in the sharpness of your landscape photos. Now on mirrorless, it's, you know, the, the mechanical changing of the aperture and the lens might cause a little bit of vibration. Now, the biggest reason I moved to exposure delay on a mirrorless, though, is that the exposure delay settings persist across the camera falling asleep or the camera going off or on. And that was one of my biggest annoyances with the self-timer, is if you use the self-timer, if the camera went to sleep, or if you turn the camera off and back on on the mirrorless, it would revert back to single shot mode, and your self, you'd have to go in, reconfigure self-timer in order to do it. It's easy to do, minor inconvenience, but I find it much less aggravating to use exposure delay and that, since that setting persists, so I can turn off my camera, turn it back on, and my exposure delay will still be set, which I find super handy since when I'm out doing landscape photography, a lot of the times I want that setting enabled. Okay, to configure exposure delay, you have to go into menu and go to your custom setting menu, down to shooting display, and if you go down to D4, there's your exposure delay mode. Press that, and as you can see, I can go anywhere from 0.2 seconds all the way up to three seconds. I tend to go two seconds, so we highlight that. Exposure delay mode is now on. So let's get my focus, check my histogram. Lost a little bit of light. So my shutter speed just a touch. Press my shutter button. It waits, it's done everything. And there's my image. And like I said, on mirrorless, there's not a huge difference between self-timer as far as vibration, maybe a little bit with the aperture rings if you're stopping down a lot. But what I find the most convenient is that you can, the setting persists across the timeout, the, the sleep mode of the camera and turning it off and on, which I find super handy. We go back into the menu and this is very much like on the mirrorless camera. You just go into your custom settings, go down to shooting and display, go down to exposure delay mode, We'll change it to two seconds, just like the mirrorless. I'm going to say OK, get our focus point. Now listen, I'm going to press the shutter. And then the image is taken, the shutter goes. So it sort of moves that vibration to the front of the shot, which just helps things settle down a little bit more when that shutter opens, so you can keep your landscape photos sharp. <laughs> And one thing I do on my Nikon Z series cameras to make getting to exposure delay settings just a little easier because I do tend to change it from, you know, when I want exposure delay and not, I keep it nice and handy. So I've actually mapped my custom function button one up here at the top. I've mapped that to the exposure delay setting. So to change it, I just press that button, pops up on the back of the camera and I can change it on the fly, either from zero, if I'm walking around hand holding things or when I'm popping up on a tripod, I can just press that button and set the exposure delay to what I want. Super handy and quick tip for that. So that's a little bit about self-timer, what it does, exposure delay, what it does, what some of the advantages are when you're in a DSLR, some of the annoyances that in my opinion it removes when you're on a mirrorless, and why I've since moved over to using exposure delay for most of the times I'm trying to make sure I have a nice stable camera on top of my tripod after I hit the shutter button. Exposure delay is a great option. We've gone over to how to configure it, how to enable it, map a custom button to it to make it a little easier to access, and you should be on your way to sharper landscape photography images. So if you found today's information helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.